Hi, everybody, and welcome to Research Triangle Nanotechnology Network's Take Out Science. This is our first episode of this crazy thing. Right now, most restaurants, just like our lab, you can't go into them to get what you need. So we're bringing it to you takeout style. My name is Dr. Holly. I am an engineer at Duke University's Shared Materials Instrumentation Facility. We are a nanotechnology fabrication and characterization facility, which is a big way of saying, I work in a lab at Duke where we make and look at tiny stuff. We are part of the Research Triangle Nanotechnology Network. Um, <laughs> and uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm definitely nervous. Um, we are part of the Research Triangle Nanotechnology Network which is uh, the other tiny stuff labs at North Carolina State University and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. We are funded by the National Science Foundation to help us bring science to the people like you guys. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in today. In addition to me here, I've got some helpers online to answer your questions, Maude and Philip. Um, they can get to them by emailing or by tweeting, or by going to our website, rtnn.ncsu.edu slash science takeout. Please, please come engage with us. We want this to be a conversation um, about science. Um, I've also got one more helper here with me today. Hi, she. June. June, science dog who will be doing her part to teach you some science. <laughs> so this is a crazy time, right? You're not at school, I'm not at work. We're sitting here in my house um, and I've been lucky enough to take home some microscopes. And I took home these microscopes because I wanted to be able to keep sort of showing people how cool microscopy is and how cool science is. And when you guys can't come to the lab to visit me or I can't come to your school to visit you, um, this is the best we can do right now. So hopefully you'll have some fun today and learn some stuff. And uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do today is look at some microscopes. I've got two different kinds of microscopes. The first one is a light microscope. I'm gonna show that to you. That one is sitting right here. Um, you guys maybe have used a light microscope at school, or maybe you even have one of your own at home. A microscope, any kind of microscope, is going to help us make little things look bigger. It's going to help us look at the details of little things. It's going to help us see things that are so tiny we can't see them with our own eyes. Um, and this microscope Normally you would put your eyes right here, but I've got a video camera here so I can show you what we're seeing through this microscope. And again, this is a light microscope. So light microscope is gonna use light to make an image. So I'll turn on the light here. You guys can see the light. Oh, that makes it very bright. Um, it's also gonna use glass lenses to take that image and make it look bigger to let us see those tiny details. And those glass lenses are kind of just like the lenses you might find in your eyeglasses that can make things look a little bit bigger or in a magnifying glass. Um, <laughs> the other microscope that we have for you today is a scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope is gonna use electrons instead of light to take pictures. It's a little bit less exciting looking and a whole lot bigger than that, light micro than that light microscope. But in fact, for an electron microscope, this is a really, really tiny one. Uh, we've got our biggest microscope in the lab is so big that it takes up a whole big room, not just a regular size room, a really, really big room. Um, but we're lucky that some of the technology for making these microscopes has evolved to make them a little bit smaller. And so this microscope is sitting here on a cart that we can wheel around. We've brought it to a number of places around the community, such as schools and libraries. Um, 
to let people see how cool scanning electron microscopy is and to let people look up super duper close at things. Um, the electron microscope works similarly to the light microscope, um, but instead of using light to take pictures, it uses electrons. Electrons are a lot tinier than the little photons of light, and so that lets us actually see even tinier things. So we can use an electron microscope to zoom in way more than we can with a light microscope. The other thing you'll notice about this electron microscope is that it's kind of just a big box. And it has to be a big box because an electron microscope, the sample that you look at and the electrons have to be inside of a vacuum. What does that mean? Not a vacuum cleaner. It means that we've pumped almost all of the air out of the chamber inside of here where our sample is sitting. Why would we do that? Because electrons are so tiny that if they hit the air molecules that are normally in air, they would bounce the electrons out of the way and they wouldn't make it to our sample to make a picture. I told you that the light microscope uses uh, glass lenses to magnify our picture. An electron microscope uses electromagnetic lenses to magnify our picture. So we've got kind of the same things, but slightly different in each of the two microscopes. And the light microscope is going to let us uh, look a little bit at things. And the electron microscope is going to let us zoom way into things. Um, if you're interested in learning more about electron microscopy, we have um, a lot of uh, links on our website where you can dig in a lot more to the science behind this. Um, I gave you a very rough overview today. Um, and next week, I promise I'm going to show you how we prepare the samples to go into the electron microscope and what it looks like inside. But for this week, we're just going to show you what it does. And the way that we're going to show you what it does is we're going to um, take a very close look at a housefly. You guys know what a housefly looks like probably. Here's my picture of one. Obviously in real life a housefly is about this big. It's pretty small. And most of the time when you see a housefly you might think, oh gross, why, do I wanna, why would I want to look at that under a microscope? But I hope by the end of the day today you guys are going to think houseflies are really, really awesome. Um, so uh, I found a housefly in the lab. It was dead when I found it. So now houseflies were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> um, but I did want to be able to look at parts of it in both the light microscope and the electron microscope. And so to do that, I cut the housefly in half, which was kind of gross. But uh, let's get started and take a look at the housefly. So let me switch over to our light microscope view. There we go. And we need to turn our light on. Oops, I bonked it. There we go. Let me move there us to the wing. I thought I had left it here, but I forgot. Okay, so we're going to start with the wing of the fly. And the wing of the fly um, it's pretty, pretty lovely here. You can see some veins along it. You can see the membrane in between it. You can see a little bit of speckling here, but you don't see a ton of detail. Um, and what we're going to do is take a look at that same bit of fly wing, well, the other wing of the fly, um, in the electron microscope. Okay. So let's switch over to our electron microscope view. And now I'm going to start the electron microscope. So just like I turned the light on in the light microscope, I need to essentially turn the light on, but in this case, turn the electrons on in the electron microscope. Okay, so here we are. This is our fly wing, um, which is super cool. So I want to show you guys a little bit about what you're looking at here in this view. Um, so this is our electron microscope control panel. 
most of the microscope is controlled via the computer, unlike our light microscope. Um, so you can see our window here with a picture. Um, we've got here control over the magnification. So this tells us how many times magnified we are compared to real life. So if it was 1x, it would be the same size as it is in real life. Right now it's 40x, so it's 40 times bigger than it is in real life. That seems like we've zoomed in a lot, but that's actually the lowest we can zoom in on this microscope. So now we're gonna zoom in even more. So every time I hit this plus button, we go up a bit, a bit, and a bit. And so now we're a hundred times bigger than it is in real life. And um, we've got another way of figuring out how big the thing is that we're looking at. And that is to look at the scale bar down here. So we know that we're a hundred times bigger in, than in real life. The scale bar also tells us how big something is in this picture in real life. So what that means is that right now, this bar length is one millimeter. So to give you an idea of what one millimeter is, your average little red ant is about five millimeters long. So it's about one fifth of a little red ant. So that's already pretty small. But you know, the whole reason why we have this microscope is so that we can zoom in even more. So let's do it. Okay, and I'm going to slow this down so the picture looks nicer. And look at all of this beautiful hair on the wing of this fly. And what we're looking at in the middle here is one of those veins on the wing. And you can see a few pieces of dirt sitting there. So now we're 300 times bigger than this fly wing is in real life. And if you look at our scale bar, this is now 300 micrometers or microns. A micrometer is another unit of measurement, so it's even smaller than a millimeter. It's one one thousandth of a millimeter, so it's pretty small. To give you guys an idea of how small that is, if you take one of your hairs and you pull it out and you look at the skinny way across it, that's about 100 micrometers across. So in this picture, if you stuck a hair in, it would be about this big. So we're looking at something that's pretty tiny. But you know what? We can zoom in even more. That's the whole point of this microscope, right? So let's go fast here so we can zoom in a little bit more. I want to show you guys how cool this, um, this vein looks on this fly wing. So it looked like a little bump when we were looking at the fly wing zoomed out. You can see it has all of these cool little spikes and barbs on it. It's, it's so neat. I had no idea that that actually was what that looked like until I looked at this today. To remind you guys now, we're 1,000 times magnified, so we're way zoomed in. And if you put a hair in this picture, your hair would be the full length of this bar right here. This is awesome, right? This is what, why we wanted to bring this to you guys, so you could see just how cool it is when you look this close at the wing of a fly. Um, Let's take a look at another part of the fly, shall we? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the other part of the fly in the light microscope, just like I did with the wing. So let me jump back to make our light microscope picture bigger. There we go. And let's move over here. Take a look at this beautiful leg. Um, I think that leg is pretty cool looking. You can see it's a little bit hairy. You can, can't see too much detail on the foot here, but that is what we're going to look at. So let's jump back again to our light microscope, our scanning electron microscope view. And now we got to move to where the foot is. So the one part of the microscope that we don't control with the uh, computer is actually where we're looking. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna crank on this knob and that is gonna move the stage. And you guys can watch us move across the fly here. 
you can see part of its body there as we're moving. Its body is very hairy looking. Um, I'm gonna move put this back down so I can do uh, everything at once here. Let's go back this way. Oh, look at that fly body. It's pretty hairy and pretty gross and pretty awesome all at the same time. Okay, and I see coming in here is the fly foot we are looking for. Uh, this is so cool. I'm so excited to show you guys this. Okay, so we want to zoom in a bit, but what we also need to do right now is to focus. Um, we're not in super great focus right now, so I'm gonna use my autofocus button. And that's gonna to try to get our image a little bit sharper than it was before. Um, and hopefully that will work. You gotta wait for it to work on autofocus. You can do it. There we go. Okay. So I'm also gonna do a little bit of auto brightness and contrast, and that's gonna make our image a little bit brighter because that was a little bit dark and hard to see. So you can see this beautiful leg with these little segments on it, and you can see these hairs on it. And can you see these little hooks at the end? Um, we're gonna look a little more closely right at the foot of this fly, which I think is super cool. I move that foot right to the middle so I can really zoom in. Okay. Let's do one more click there and let me slow this down so you guys can see the really great detail of this guy. All right. This fly foot is beautiful, I think. So you've got these little hairs, you've got these big spiky hairs, you've got these awesome little claws here. Now, if you guys have seen a fly buzzing around and you've seen it then land and start walking, you may have seen that flies can actually walk up walls and onto the ceiling and pretty much anywhere um, that they want to. So. I, you know, when I looked at the fly foot, I thought, well, it must be these little claws that they use to move around. But it turns out there's an even smaller structure on the foot that the flies use to help them crawl around. So let's zoom in some more. over a little bit so you guys can see the part that we're interested in. There we go. So let's slow this down a little again so you can see these nice sharp details. All right, so do you see this little flap right here? That little flap is something called a pulvilli. I just learned that word in getting ready for this. And this is what actually lets the fly walk on the ceiling. So if we zoom in even more to this little flap, we're going to look especially closely at these little hairs. Let's zoom in some more. There we go. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit. And you guys see these little hairs? Do you see how they're all have these little flat ends right there? Those little hairs and those little flat ends produce um, a little sticky substance made of sugar and oil. And apparently that little sticky substance on the end of those little hairs is what actually lets the fly walk on the ceiling. So just to remind you guys, we're now 1,000 times magnified. And if we had a piece of hair in this picture, it would be as big as this scale bar right here. So we're looking at some things that are 
really, really very tiny. Um, okay. I've got one last thing to show you guys before we finish up today, and uh, that is a, the face of the fly. Um, unfortunately, the fly, well, fly face is so cool that when I cut it in half to put half in the electron microscope and half in the light microscope, I didn't want to accidentally miss part of the head, and so I didn't actually cut the head in half. So I don't have a light microscope part to show you. I just have the electron microscope part. But I promise you, it is so cool, you won't be mad at me. All right, so let's zoom out and let's go find the face of this fly. Okay, here we go. You can see how awesomely hairy those legs and the body of this fly is as we move across the fly here. I'm turning my knob to move the stage so that we're cruising to a different part of the fly. Okay, here comes the face of the fly. Oh, this guy is beautiful, I think. This is, this is what I think. Okay, I'm going to do a quick autofocus here. There we go. Hello, beautiful fly. So what we're looking at here is the face of the fly. We're looking kind of from the side. So you can see one eye here. You can see all this crazy hair around its face. It's like the fly has like eyelashes and a beard or something, which is pretty awesome. Um, but with the part of the fly that I'm pretty excited about showing you guys is the eye. So we're gonna zoom in a bunch on the eye because the eye is super, super cool. So as we zoom in on the eye, you're starting to see these little spots here. And I'm going to move us just a little bit this way. Oops, wrong way. This way. There we go. And as we zoom in here, you'll notice that those little spots are actually little tiny hexagons. So right now we're 500 times bigger than in real life, and uh, if you if you can see, uh, sorry, each one of these little hexagons, and these hexagons are individual lenses in the eye. They're called omatidia. Um, and insects have eyes that are made of a whole bunch of lenses and so instead of like your eye, which has just one lens. Insect eyes eyes have a whole bunch of lenses, and that's called a compound eye. Um, so let's zoom in just a little further so we can see just how beautiful and perfect each one of these lenses are. I think this is just amazing. Let's slow that down a little bit so we have a nice sharp picture. Look at that. You can see there's some dirt sitting on the eye. Probably if it was alive, it would have cleaned that dirt off. Um, but just to remind you guys now how far zoomed in we are. So we're 1,500 times bigger than in real life. And our little scale bar here is 50 micrometers. Um, to give you an idea of something that is close to that size, one of your skin cells, on average, the size of your skin cells is about 30 micrometers. So that would be about from here to here. So actually probably close to the size of one of these little um, lenses in the insect eye. So hopefully you guys now think that a fly is actually really, really cool looking. Um, I certainly think that it is. So I'm going to zoom us back out a little bit here so we can admire this fly. You can dig them out and take a look at something around you. Uh, maybe you could take a picture with your light microscope. Or maybe you could um, draw a picture of what you see and send it to us. 
Um, we would love to get pictures. And if we get pictures from you guys, um, we will put our favorites into the next episode. We're also looking for suggestions of what to show in our next episode. What kinds of things would you guys like to look at under the scanning electron microscope? Obviously, you now know that a fly is super cool. And hopefully, we can find some other things that you guys will also think are super cool. Um, and just to remind you guys, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, use our email address or Twitter or go to our website. Um, and uh, last but not least, I want to give our special shout outs this week. Um, Shout out to my coworker Kirk Bryson for our theme song. A uh, big shout out to Maude and Philip for helping me get this ready and answering your questions while we've been going on. A big shout out to Mr. Rockenstein's class watching from Berlin, Germany. Danke for turning, tuning in to us tonight. Um, and a special shout out to my nieces and nephews who told me that they were going to watch this. Hopefully they are. And uh, last but not least, a big thank you to my trusty assistant, who seems to be just laying on the floor down here. There she is, June the science dog. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we'll see you guys next week.